Good morning and welcome to this Top Desk webinar. Uh, my name is Will Bolton. Uh, I'm a Top Desk consultant uh, and I will be taking you through our upcoming changes uh, to single sign on in Top Desk. Just a few housekeeping points before we get started. Um, so during this webinar, uh, you can use the panel on the right hand side uh, to ask questions. I have a colleague who will be asking, answering questions during the presentation. Uh, and at the end of the webinar, we will go through and, and answer uh, any outstanding questions uh, and follow up via email if we need to. So you can leave early if you, uh, if you need to. The webinar will also be recorded um, and will be uploaded to YouTube once it's finished. Um, so you'll be able to watch the replay uh, if you need to leave early. Finally, uh, we do suggest that if you're not answer, asking questions, um, you collapse the panel on the right hand side as otherwise it will just obscure uh, the slides. So what are we going to talk about in this webinar? So uh, the webinar is aimed at application managers, uh, but specifically to application managers of on-premises top desk installations. Um, SaaS customers are not going to be affected by this change uh, as Kerberos uh, has always been disabled for SaaS environments. Um, so SaaS customers are not impacted by these changes. Um, what we'll be doing is we'll be talking about um, Kerberos and its upcoming end of life. Um, and this webinar will be, uh, is designed to give information uh, to help you uh, understand how to set up SAML for yourself, uh, but we will also be providing resources in how to do this. We're going to begin just by briefly revising how TopDesk handles user accounts and login. Uh, we're then going to examine the difference between Kerberos and SAML, the two single sign-on methods, uh, and we're going to finish off by just giving you practical tips for preparing your organization uh, to deploy SAML. So let's start by revising some basics uh, about how TopDesk handles user accounts and authentication. So in TopDesk, um, there are two types of accounts. Uh, we have person records on the one hand and operator records on the other. Uh, both of these records can be found in the supporting files module. A person card logs into the self-service portal and has calls, changes, and assets, things like this linked to it. Whereas an operator logs into the operator section to process calls uh, and generally uh, deliver any other services of their, their respective service department. Generally, via an Active Directory import, uh, most people in your organization are going to have a person card. Uh, and additionally, people required to log into the back end uh, will then also have a separate operator card. Um, I'm highlighting this because login methods are independent for both these types of records, persons and operators. So for example, uh, it is possible to have single sign-on uh, active for the self-service portal for operators, uh, whereas manual login for operators might be all that is configured. The two login methods are independent. So once the account management is handled, um, you can then separately determine how people log in. So login settings are found in functional settings under login settings. Uh, and there are currently four authentication methods available, both for persons and operators. Two of these are manual login methods. These are the two on the left-hand side. That is top desk authentication and LDAP authentication. Both of these involve manually typing uh, a username and password into a sign-in box. Uh, top desk authentication will check the password that's supplied against uh, an inbuilt saved password with top desk, uh, whereas LDAP uh, checks the password against some sort of external source, usually Active Directory, um, to see if the password matches that instead. So the upcoming changes that we're discussing today do not affect either of these two forms of login. Um, so we're not going to discuss them any further in this webinar. Uh, we're just going to focus on the two on the right-hand side, the single sign-on methods of Kerberos and 
SAML. So yeah, the first is Kerberos. Um, this utilizes Microsoft's implementation of the Kerberos protocol from MIT. Um, this particular method is the one that's not going to be included uh, in the top desk on-premise release, starting from the Q3 2018 release. Um, if you're on the June version of TopDesk, um, this is the most recent version which is going to have Kerberos in. So the next scheduled release, uh, the Q3 2018 release, um, will no longer support Kerberos as a single sign-on method. SAML is the other form of single sign-on we have, which is based off the SAML2 protocol. Um, so once Kerberos is removed from TopDesk, SAML will therefore be the only method of performing single sign-on. So let's compare a little bit the differences between these two methods um, and so we can understand why Kerberos is actually being phased out. So Kerberos um, is a complicated protocol. Uh, it's based off ticket exchanges with authentication servers and service providers. Um, barring in-house Kerberos expertise, uh, it's difficult to set up uh, and also difficult to maintain. With so for instance, Kerberos requires adjustments in DNS, uh, Active Directory, Top Desk, the Top Desk server, uh, to function correctly at a very basic level. Um, and if your environment has multiple aliases or you use multiple internal Active Directory domains, um, then the, the setup process becomes even more complicated. Um, Kerberos is also prone to a lot of errors, such as caching issues, um, which makes it a lot less stable than a protocol like SAML. Additionally, Kerberos only works um, when the top desk server, uh, authentication server, and the user's machine are all in the same network. Um, so this restricts it to only on-premise environments, uh, but it also restricts it to users who are based in your corporate network. So generally, this isn't a problem for operators, um, but then this rules out the possibility of remote operators uh, or self-service portal users on their mobile devices, for instance, or at home uh, from logging in. Um, where they'll have to use one of the fallback methods that we discussed earlier. So especially with the self-service portal, uh, we find that this really impacts user experiences more and more nowadays. Finally, since Kerberos is an old Microsoft product, uh, maintaining compatibility for each new release of TopDesk uh, takes up a lot of development time uh, and supporting customers whose Kerberos uh, is encountering issues, uh, also takes up a lot of resources that support. Uh, so the idea is that freeing up this time allows for more time to be spent doing useful things such as developing new top desk functionality instead of supporting this old method. So SAML addresses most of these issues nicely. Um, SAML is a standard uh, protocol which uh, whose traffic goes over HTTP, uh, which is much more um, widely supported and stable than uh, Kerberos traffic. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview of how SAML works um, to understand some of the concepts that we'll be talking about later. So in the bottom left-hand side of this diagram, we have our user. This could be an operator or a person for the self-service portal. Uh, SAML mainly considers two uh, two different parties that aren't the, the user, which is the service provider, which in this instance is, is TopDesk, uh, and the identity provider, or IDP for short, um, which, as we'll see later, uh, is quite frequently a thing like Active Directory Federated Services, ADFS. Um, these two um, service providers um, are linked together by making the other aware of federation metadata, so the service provider will publish its SAML federation metadata, as will the identity provider. Um, to link the two together and allow them to authenticate, um, all we need to do is publish, uh, in, import, excuse me, 
the uh, metadata uh, of the opposing uh, party. So the service provider has the identity provider's metadata imported and vice versa so that the two become aware of each other. Once this is done and the two are linked, um, when a user tries to access TopDesk, uh, their browser will be redirected um, to the identity provider, which handles authentication. Um, so once the identity provider is satisfied that the user is who they say they are, uh, it returns a specially formatted SAML response uh, that the user's browser then passes back to TopDesk. And because of the federation metadata, uh, this response is crafted in a way that TopDesk is confident um, that the user is who they say they are. So SAML um, is considerably less com complicated than setting up Kerberos um, because all of its information is just handled um, by the federation metadata, uh, as opposed to Kerberos where there are lots of dedicated passwords, service accounts, files, DNS records uh, that all need to be kind of coordinated. So because SAML is so much less complicated, uh, we find that generally it's a lot, lot more stable than a Kerberos implementation. Uh, SAML also re relies on public key infrastructure, um, and therefore um, it doesn't have this requirement that Kerberos has for users to be in the same network as the server. Um, the user, uh, the service provider, and the identity provider can all be in different networks, um, but SAML will still work just because of its design. So this makes it a lot more um, easy to, to use generally. So mobile users and operators uh, that we were discussing earlier um, can use SAML to authenticate, um, even with two-factor authentication, something like this, if, if that's desired. Finally, um, since identity providers are readily available, uh, and setup of SAML is a lot easier. Um, implementation times uh, and support slash development times um, are reduced. Um, so deploying SAML will generally free up resources both at your end for the application manager and the infrastructure teams, uh, as well as at our end uh, in terms of support and then developing new features. So now that we understand a little bit more about the differences between the two protocols, um, I'll just go through how we need to prepare for deploying SAML ourselves. Uh, and for, to do this, there are a few requirements for both your top desk environment itself uh, and the server that you're hosting it on. Firstly, uh, and this is the most important one, uh, we need to have a SAML2 compliant identity provider. Um, fortunately, if you are a Microsoft customer, um, ADFS is very commonly used for this purpose, uh, although other identity providers um, can be used, of course. Uh, ADFS is available as a server role, starting from server 2012, uh, so this makes deployment quite familiar uh, for those of you deploying Microsoft servers already. Uh, HTTPS is another requirement. So your top desk environment must deploy TLS slash SSL uh, to serve top desk over HTTPS and have a secure connection, um, as this is a requirement for the SAML protocol. Uh, to do this then, you will need to have a valid SSL certificate and key. Finally, we have uh, this requirement with the Java installation, uh, the Java cryptography extension must be installed, uh, but it also must be configured to allow for unlimited key strings. Uh, generally, this extension is already installed as part of the standard Java installation, uh, but it might require a small adjustment uh, of some of the configuration. Uh, there is more available avail information available uh, on the extranet. So how do we actually then set up SAML once we have these things in place? Um, the process is roughly as follows. This is a high level overview. Uh, for each login realm using SAML, uh, 
So if you want to use both the self-service portal and operator section, uh, a configuration needs creating in top desk. Um, so yeah, if we if you want to configure single sign-on for both both aspects, self-service and operators, you'll need to create two configurations in top desk, um, or only one if you're only using one of those one of those realms. To do this, um, there is a configuration wizard in TopDesk. Uh, really, this just involves pointing TopDesk at your identity providers, federation metadata, uh, and specifying which attribute your records have as their username. Uh, generally, we recommend something like the UPN, um, but the old short form SAM account name uh, is also quite a common common one as well. Whatever you're using, uh, you just need to make the SAML configuration aware of this. Making the IDP aware of top desk configuration follows a similar process. Uh, so generally, once the SAML configuration is created in top desk, uh, that configuration will then get its own federation metadata, like we discussed. Um, and to complete the process, uh, we just need to supply the identity provider um, with the, the metadata that gets generated at the previous step. Uh, there are guides of how to do this for common IDPs, uh, such as ADFS and Azure AD uh, on the extranet, which we'll show later. Finally, um, some IDPs um, require a little bit of additional configuration. Um, after you've provided the federation metadata. Um, these are various things such as ensuring seamless single sign-on within the corporate intranet. Uh, again, there is documentation available for vendor-specific configuration. Uh, and this is also on the extranet. Um, as part of setting up SAML, we always strongly recommend deploying it on a test environment first uh, before deploying to your live environment. So, um, to help put this all into practice, um, we do have the following resources available for you to read. Um, the first is KI9758 in the top desk extranet. Um, so this is the official end of life announcement, uh, knowledge item uh, in the extranet. Um, you can read this to read a little bit more about why we are phasing out um, Kerberos, uh, as well as to find some of the other resources uh, in terms of support. Um, something highly recommended by me is definitely the Managing Top Desk Manual. Um, so in the extranet, under the Documentation tab, um, you can browse to Manuals and then find the Managing Top Desk for your, your version of Top Desk. Um, as part of this manual, uh, there's a section in which covers everything to do with login settings. Um, and this has a lot of documentation uh, on the, the SAML configuration wizard, uh, as well as some of the necessary steps for the uh, identity provider setup as well. Finally, we have KI5260, uh, also as part of the top desk action it. Uh, this is our master SAML configuration knowledge item. Um, so this contains a lot of links to some of the vendor specific guides, uh, as well as a lot of common FAQs about prerequisites that are needed, um, as well as a lot of common troubleshooting issues as well. Um, for these two, for well, for these extranet documents, um, if you don't have an extranet account, um, please contact our support department uh, and they'll be able to set you up with an account. Uh, where you'll be able to access all of these top three uh, resources. Uh, finally, um, if you're not confident with deploying SAML for yourself, or you just want some assistance from top desk generally, uh, then if you just contact your account manager, um, they'll be happy to arrange some consultancy, um, where a consultant such as myself uh, can come and help you uh, make the transition from Kerberos to SAML. So that is the end of the webinar. Um, we're now going to upload this webinar to YouTube, uh, where we'll also answer any outstanding questions that might have been asked during the webinar uh, that my colleagues weren't, weren't able to get around to. Um,
thank you for attending and uh, have a wonderful rest of the week.